Right then, guys, uh, let's get cracking with our color space transition magic helper tool. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in an image. So I'm going to jump over to my composite view. All right. Put down a file node. Nope. In, sorry. Let me try that again. I'm going to go over to my image context IMG here. Put down a, a manager image network. Jump in there, then I'm going to put down a file. Okay, and what I've got here is I've just loaded up an HDR, so an EXR file um, that we've got coming in. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to examine this image and we are going to um, we're going to convert it to the Aces color space, and we're going to use this as a base to um, to build our tool. Okay, so let's just familiarize with ourselves with what we're looking at here. Okay, so with the display flag on this node, we can see this image. And here we've got this, what we call the corrections tab. Okay, so here we've got our color space, which is set to aces, which is the only one that we're going to be using. Um, if you've not got this installed at, at your PC at home, you need to let me know because we need to, um, because otherwise you'll be working in standard, what we call 2.2 gamma. Um, which is kind of the old-fashioned way of working. So ideally, if you're going to be working from home, we need to get this configured. So let me know if, if this is not the case. And at this side here, this is the output transform. So currently we're looking at sRGB, which is the standard color space for computer monitors. Kind of makes sense. If we're delivering to a computer monitor, perfect. Um, Rec 709 is uh, for TV. And you can see that sort of brightened up the image a little bit. Okay, so there's a little bit of a difference there. So I want you to sort of get used to um, sort of noticing that difference and make a decision about which one you want to use. I'd probably stick with sRGB if you're going uh, to work on computer monitors. Um, but if you want to make sure it looks decent on a TV screen, you know, make sure you're checking that as well. Um, all the others... I don't think we need to really worry about. We mentioned Rec 2020 in the previous video, and as you can see, it just kind of cl uh, dumps away all the uh, all the saturation. Um, so yeah, obviously not not usable for us at this time. So we'll set this over to sRGB, okay? And what I want you to notice about this image, as I zoom in, using you know using the the experience of what i've got of just looking at these images and looking for telltale signs of it being in the wrong input transform look how saturated these colors are okay everything has got this really heavily saturated uh look to it the orange in the leaves is really really prominent the green almost looks like it's sort of clipping uh, so we've got this really full on um color Okay, so to me, that's automatically saying this perhaps is not in the right color space. Okay, so in COPS, we can take advantage of some processing to convert this. Uh, we can run a test conversion over it, and we can do that with a VOP COP generator, a VOP COP filter, sorry. And we can connect that up, all right. And when we dive inside there, You'll probably be familiar with this kind of VOP layout. All right. And what we want to do is take the RGB values, process, process them here, and then spit them back out. All right. And the, the node that we want to use is an OCIO transform. So remember in the presentation, we talked about transforming a color space. Okay. So this node takes color as a vector, which is really annoying, and it outputs it as a vector, which is really annoying. So what we need to do to convert our floating point RGBs, we need to get a float to vector here. All right, connect up our R, G, and B, and then take that vector as the input, okay? And then on the output, we need to do the opposite, so we need to do a vector to float. Okay, and then output R, G, and B. Okay. So now what we've got is currently, if we select the OCIO transform node, it's not doing anything because it's 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 receiving an input from linear and it's outputting it to linear. Okay. So let us 
convert it to ACES CG, which is kind of the um, the preferred transform for working with uh, CG uh, and VFX. So we'll set it to ACES CG. Okay, still no change in our image. So what we need to do now is we need to identify what type of input we've got. And I've got, um, there is an example on Blackboard, like a cheat sheet. Let me just see if I can find it. No, but I'll, I'll upload a cheat sheet that sort of gives you a, a bit of a guide on what type of image uh, what's linear and what's non-linear and, and things like that. But when, when we're working with EXR, which we should be 99.9% .9 of the time, there's no reason really. Um, most places now, including Quixel Bridge, give you the opportunity to download uh, linear EXR files, which are the preferred format for us. Um, so if we're working in that linear sRGB way, we can sort of confidently say that our input is going to be, if we scroll down this massive list, these are all the input transforms. So look, you've got all the very expensive um, cameras here. Uh, you've, you've got like GoPros and things like that, uh, and RED cameras and Sony cameras. So any anything that captures image uh, images, we can take that input and transform it to the ACES color space to, again, standardize everything so that when we inject our work into a pipeline we know we're all kind of working within the same color and our our green is referencing the same green as everybody else within the pipeline um so the one that we're looking for here because this is just like a, a generic um srgb linear image that we've got from uh, i think this is from quixel bridge um so what we can do is we can scroll all the way down and say utility linear srgb okay Right, so immediately you'll notice a huge difference when we set that transform now. This this node is actually doing something. So immediately you can see we've lost a lot of that saturation. So let's jump up a level, okay? So this is our converted version. If we hold down shift and put the display flag on this version as well, we can get a nice side-by-side -side view. And to me, the difference is huge. I, I don't know if it's coming through on the recording, um, but the colors look way more natural on the converted side here. This now looks so oversaturated and so weirdly orange that it, there's no way it could be right, okay? So for example, the blue in the sky is no longer looking like some kind of radiated nuclear blue, um, but on this side looking like a much more natural color. And if we zoom into these leaves here, you can really see the difference um, we've lost that horrible orange color, which if you were using this as an HDR, you know, you might be thinking, why does everything look orange? It's because you're pumping in loads of orange light into the scene. Um, and now you've got a much more natural look. All right. Okay. So that was like a quick introduction. This setup here is ultimately what we're going to package up into a, a digital asset. All right. And in the next video, what we're going to do, we're going to do that and we're going to automate the process of um, baking out the f this finished image to disk. All right. So we'll do that in the next video. Thanks.